Hey, everybody. Professor Smith here coming to you from my remote office in Butcher Educational Center with today's video, taking notes during class lectures. You know, uh, I'm dating myself here a little bit, but when I was in college, uh, without uh, most of us having ever heard of the internet, uh, it was just normal to go to class. Many classes were lecture. PowerPoint was brand new when I was in graduate school, so we didn't have it when I was in college. And um, the professor would get up there and give a lecture and we would get out our paper and pencils or pens and we'd take notes. Uh, my mentor in grad school, my advisor, a fellow named Rick Hardy, who had run for Congress a few years earlier. He was so dynamic, he would get up on a stage in front of 500 students, mostly freshmen at the University of Missouri, and give these incredible dynamic lectures full of jokes and real world examples. Students just loved it. He didn't have a single note with him, and he didn't put anything on overheads. PowerPoint existed then, but he didn't use it. He didn't even use the old fashioned overhead projector. He didn't use anything except his voice and his memory. And we loved it. And we would sit there and take notes and the students would too. And then we'd go over notes with the professor. Well, anyway, things have sure changed, haven't they? I think many of you have grown up with PowerPoint. About 10 years ago, I had a transfer student come in from a community college who had added my class a little late. And he asked me if he could get the PowerPoints. I was stunned. I rarely use PowerPoint when I'm teaching. Why did this student assume that there would be PowerPoint presentations? Well, you know why. PowerPoints are so ubiquitous today. And there are other ones too, like Apple Keynote and Google Slides. We call them slide decks now. Well, slide decks, PowerPoint, or whatever are so ubiquitous that this student had just assumed that I had PowerPoint presentations to share with them, and I didn't. What I have is my ability to lecture, and that calls on you to be in class and to take good notes. And I get a little frustrated sometimes when folks have their phones out or seem distracted. And then I remember, I don't think anybody's ever taught you how to take notes during a lecture. So where do I get off judging you when none of us have ever taken the time to really sit down and show you these skills? Well, that's what this video is about. Now I'm making this for a state and local government class. I may reuse it for other classes in the future. So just know that the notes I'm gonna show you pertain to state and local government. Even if you're not in that particular class, I think that you will still find this useful, I hope so. And what the heck, you may learn a thing or two about these state secretaries of state too. So let's get right to it, shall we? And let's start with a screen share. One second here, share that screen. And here we go. And what I've done here is I've cut down the notes that I post. The notes that I post for class are in black. And then you notice I wrote in notes in red there. Um, I've cut them down. And um, so this is not the whole set of notes. It's just the ones pertaining to the Secretary of State. I'm going to launch my YouTube recording of my lecture on this last year and then pause it and show you how I type in notes or how I write in notes if I'm using a pen and paper during a lecture. So to start with, one good thing to do is just to have the notes that I put up ready. If I remember that I posted them ahead of time and you can print them off or what have you, but you can also just do it as you go, just write this down. You can write down each thing as in the notes as I get to it and then add your own notes based on lectures and other things like supplementary materials such as YouTube videos or class discussions or what have you, maps. Um, or you can write the whole thing down all at once at the beginning of class, points one through six here. But if you do that, be sure to leave room for you to take notes there. In fact, I made a mistake here. I should have also had a place. Oh, sorry, I thought I'd made a mistake and I hadn't. Even before point one, just some general observations about the Secretary of State. I've got a space for that too. Now, let's do the next screen share. Hello there. 
next screen share coming right up. And let's be sure that we are sharing sound. And here we go. Okay, here is the beginning of the lecture from 2020, um, in which I started discussing the Secretary of State. Let's start watching. Uh, but it's a fair question. I can't answer questions about the Secretary of State. Um, again, a very different job from the United States Secretary of State, but actually pretty important. Usually it's out of sight, out of mind. Chris Kobach changed all that here in Kansas, but- All right, and we're already ready for some notes. Let's do it. So we go back to our notes here and a couple of observations. I too fast sometimes and make mistakes. It sounds good. Back to the video. Usually, um, a lot of voters probably don't even know who their state secretary of state is. It's, it's kind of like electricity. Uh, when you turn that light switch or adjust that thermostat, if everything works, you don't even think about it. It's when it doesn't work that all at once we start finding out the phone number of the power company and, you know, what the hell is going on here and when's this going to be fixed? The secretary of states who, um, or secretaries of state, pardon me, who uh, do their job well, oftentimes are kind of obscure. Records are getting kept, license are getting issued, elections are being conducted. Ah, very big. I see some more note-taking opportunities here. So let's go back to our notes. Most voters don't recognize unless something goes wrong, take it for granted like electricity. Let's go back to the lecture, shall we? Big issue this year. Um, and that's part of their job as well. Um, for one thing, the Secretary of State keeps the state's records. You need a copy of an old bill. I'm not talking about a, an invoice for how much money you owe. I mean, like a bill that was filed in the legislature piece of legislation, um, you need to research. Um, there's a state library, for example, in the Capitol building here in Kansas where staff of legislators and the governor can go research legislation. The Secretary of State maintains that and oversees it, makes sure that that information is available. Same deal with the state's website. As a matter of fact, the readings lately that I've been assigning you are right off the Kansas Secretary of State's website. I see some more opportunities for note taking. And now we can get into some of the sub points. So we're down here in state's record keeper and I give examples in class. Uh, for example, uh, So there are some examples there, legislations, library for the legislators and staff to do research and even, again, oh, it corrected for me. The website from which our readings are taken. Yeah, that's good stuff. Let's get back to the video. Uh, they maintain this information about the responsibilities of these different offices, makes a handy way for me to assign those readings to you, and it doesn't cost us any money. You, you paid for it as taxpayers. Uh, so the state's website, thank you, Secretary of State, they keep that maintained for us and keep that information available. That includes election returns. 
Okay, I realized I forgot something and then there's something new, election returns. This is a little bit overlap, but I'm gonna specifically put state's website and then also election returns. See how this is working? Let's do some more. When the media and political junkies are wanting to know on election night, oh, who's leading, who's leading, they're gonna to go to the Secretary of State's website and they're gonna post the latest election returns as they come in from the counties. So the Secretary of State is the um, state's record keeper. Uh, another thing that's really pretty significant in these states with the petition initiative, and actually in all states, is uh, even if you live in a state like Kansas that does not have the initiative, you still have to file a petition to run for office. Let's say, let's say you decide to do it. Okay, that's it. I'm fed up. I'm running for school board. I'm going to do it. I'm going to be on the ballot this time. In order to get on there, you need, the very first step is you need, well, you got to file a create a committee, but the other thing you need to do is you need to collect a certain number of signatures on petitions that uh, this person um, is, uh, I signed that I want this person on the ballot to run for school board or whatever office. Well, you're always going to get some funny signatures. A lot of them are good faith mistakes. Someone forgot that, they're, uh, that they moved or they didn't know which district they lived in or they signed it twice because they signed it three days ago and they didn't realize it was the same petition. You get lots of stuff like that. Sometimes you get shenanigans. I mean, they found things like, you know, people put Mickey Mouse on there or what have you. Or, um, and um, so they've got to throw those out. Some signatures are illegible. Throw those out. Um, and uh, so all that verification I think we're at a good stopping place here. We've got a lot to get down in our notes at this point. And we're back to our notes. And we've noticed here, take this up a bit, uh, that we're now on point two, verify petitions. Notice I just used the number sign, which of course also doubles as the hashtag these days, but I'm using it the old school way to save time because you're probably handwriting these notes and you got to cut corners where you can. Notice I'm usually not doing complete sentences either, keeping it simple so I can keep up with my writing, um, just the facts and use this, uh, what I gave you as a starting point. And here's one where we can do subpoints. So some signatures are rejected. You know what, I'm having trouble spelling the word illegible. I think it's probably with an I, but this brings up something important. Notice how I kept second guessing myself about the spelling of illegible. I really don't need to do that, do I? Um, if I can get it down in such a way that I can read it, fine. Um, so what if it's misspelled? I did eventually guess at the right spelling, but don't second guess yourself while taking these notes. They don't have to be perfect. They're for you. They're for you. They're not for me. These notes are designed to help you study. And so uh, incomplete sentences, some, some phrases that only make sense to you, a couple of spelling errors, who cares? These are just in the moment notes. Um, and so I hope that that is helpful. Uh, I could go on and on, but I think that we've kind of got it here. And I sure hope that this has been useful. 
Um, we professors, some of us are old school, you know, I'm north of 50 now, and uh, uh, my teaching methods may be a little dated, but I still believe in them. And I think if you can uh, really, you know, sorry, but put the cell phones away, I get distracted by mine too. It's right here. I'm never far from mine either, but, but just set it aside. If there's an emergency, you might check it very briefly, but generally keep it put away. Keep the distractions to a minimum, but most of all, take notes. Use the notes that the professor gives you, whether it is a PowerPoint or whether it's just Microsoft Word on the overhead like me, and just as a starting place. Don't rely on those. Those are just for starters. And then you add your own notes like I did. I will take those notes I just took, save them, and I'll also put them up in the Canvas module so you can take another look at them. But I hope that this has been useful. Uh, we old school professors are probably not going to change. Um, there's real value to interactive exercises. I mean, as you know, in state and local government, I do a community engagement project that will continue, but that's outside of class. Uh, in class, instead of those kinds of exercises, I do lecture quite a bit in that particular class and some others. And taking good notes is critical. Uh, we also have time for class discussion, and I welcome your feedback. And many of your other professors probably have similar expectations. So I hope that this has been useful. I'll see you in class, and I'll see you with the next video.